Okay, so this is a quick video to explain how I would import this image into Visual Weave. At the moment, this is a JPEG image, and a JPEG is made up of hundreds of colors, even though they look like a solid color. It's actually an approximation of solid colors made of lots of different colors. I would save that as a bitmap file. So I would, I would um, take the original JPEG image and I would save that. So I'm going to save that onto my desktop and I'll, I'll call it Marvin. Save that. Okay, and then I would launch Microsoft Paint. Uh, paint. Open. And I would then open from my desktop this file and then I would save that as a bitmap save as a bitmap picture and that allows us to limit the number of colors and I would limit that to be a 256 color bitmap save that okay it won't be transparent okay so that's our saved um, image and he's called Marvin bitmap so we then go to Visual Weave, launch that, and we're going to uh, import the Marvin image. So go to our desktop, and it's a Marvin bitmap. Um, Marvin bitmap, which was this one say open and we can rotate him on the rod or for the purpose of this one I'll just have him looking at us um, advanced sizing you, you set the size of the rod here which determines the maximum number of threads that you can have the more threads you have the more detail you'll have in your pattern uh, I'm going to use um, NCP pattern threads, uh, A, size A pattern threads, and size C wrapping thread. Say OK. Go to next. And then how large we want the pattern. We can set the number of pattern threads, or we can set the pattern angle. Um, and as I increase the pattern angle, you can see that um, the pattern takes up more space on the rod. This is a cross section of the rod. Um, it tells us as it increases the pattern angle the number of threads it's going to use so I'm thinking maybe we want to use 80 threads so I'll increase the pattern angle until I've got 80 threads um, and that will do so we'll say go to grid it's going to import the image using all of the colors that are available so if I zoom out now it, it that's not too bad because we limited the colors in the in the uh, bitmap to start with. What you could do is tell the software to use a limited number of colors to start with. So what we might want to do is say load a different palette. We're going to edit this existing palette and the colors that we want are going to be black, white, gray, light green, dark green, brown, orange, yellow. So black, white, say gray, um, maybe dark green. So dark green, or a light green, um, brown, this color here might be like gold or brown, I'll call it brown, and then like an orangey color and a yellow up here. So we go like orangey color, one of these, and then the yellow up top. Um, and then I would always pick a couple of just random colors that we know are not in, in the picture at all. Um, you use those as just placeholder colors when we're working in the grid. 
So pick those random colors. We'll save this as a new um, palette. We'll call it um, like Marvin Marvin 2 as, as the palette. It's, it will then do some calculations in the background and as it does that it shows you its progress. And what you can see is now it has limited the, the total number of threads or spools colors that are available. So then when we load the grid again it will only select from these colors. So once this has finished loading the color map it will give us a confirming message and then we'll be able to recreate the grid. So we, that's the confirming message we say OK and then that they are the colors that are available now and so we say load grid, load grid, it will update the grid according to the colors we've said are available. Um, and then what I would do is use the ghost to compare the original image with the new grid image. And when you turn the, the ghost on, it, it superimposes the original image with the grid that's been created. And you can see that we will just need to line that up a little bit to, to get it lined up a bit better. It's not perfect, but it gives you a view of the grid versus the the original image and then what I would do is I would put the transparency at about 50% so that we can still compare the original with the new and I would then manually edit the grid so when we look at his hat or his helmet it's mostly light green with a dark green outline but the color that's been automatically selected is all dark green so let's change this dark green to light green so I'll use the paint the flood fill I'd choose light green and I'd set that to light green and I then want to put the dark green region of his the outline of his helmet so I'd pick the dark green oops I'd take off the flood fill go back to the pen and then I would manually draw the outline of the helmet it won't be perfect and it never will be because you're trying to approximate a curved line using squares. So there's always going to be an approximation of um, what the pattern looks like on the grid. And your task is to set up the grid so that it looks as good as you can get it with the space that you have available. Um, I'm going to pick this light green color and take away some of those grid squares that are, are not right. But you will slowly build up and edit and, and improve the, um, the grid based on comparing it to the original image and um, taking away any wrong colors and, and putting the right colors in place. If I fix up his eyes a little bit. Um, and you could spend a lot of time doing this if I use the gray to outline the eyes. You'll find that there's a lot of time spent fixing up the grid and that's just the nature of of the project. Um, nothing you can do than, other than keep editing the grid until you're happy with it. Once you're happy with it you could then um, go to the left list, tell it to build. Um, I forgot to nominate a, a wrapping thread. Let's go back to the grid. Oops. Let's go back to the grid. Um, select this color as the wrapping thread. Okay. Then go to left list, go build, 